How does a dye-sensitized solar cell work? In this tutorial, I will dive into the mechanics and, and the structure of this solar cell technology. And first off, I'm going to use the, the abbreviation DSSC for dye-sensitized solar cell. And the type of DSSC we're going to talk about is this structure you see right here, where you have two glass slides like this and then a bunch of functional materials uh, in between, that are sandwiched in between. So you see uh, an image of what it can look like where you have the two glass lights, and in between you have all these sandwiched materials. And in this tutorial I will go into the details of how these work and how they uh, end up being a solar cell. So DSCs uh, can be used for different applications. The glass type of DSCC uh, can for example be used for uh, glass facades like in this building in Switzerland But let's dive into how the actual solar cell works Starting off we're always going to need a light source such as the Sun But DSC can also use indoor lighting as the light source and Light produces photons little package of light energy and that's where everything starts in a DSC we have a dye molecule which I represent like this dye molecule and that dye molecule has uh, the ability to absorb the energy of light. So when a photon comes in, it can excite the molecule. What that means is that the electron is free to move around. It is not no longer um, completely bound to uh, the state where it was before. And what it leaves behind then is a little pocket, a hole where the electron used to be. So we have an electron and a hole. To be able to utilize this energy now stored in the excited uh, electron, we need to close the loop. So to be able to get an electric uh, current flowing, we need to close the loop so the electron goes from the dye molecule around into whatever load we're gonna use and then come back. How is that done? Well, first off, the dye molecule sits connected to a semiconducting material. I'm going to draw it like this. So this is a semiconductor. But it's not just a, a flat layer, it's actually a um, nanoparticle network. Why would you use a nanoparticle network? Well the thing is with nanoparticle is that they're so small so even though you make a quite thin layer like this you will have a huge surface area. Surface area. And this is a really important feature because you want as many dye molecule to sit on these surfaces as possible. I'm just going to draw a few here, but in reality, pretty much all the surfaces are covered with these little dye molecules. Okay, so once the electron is excited, it is able to uh, jump over with the, thanks to this anchor to the semiconducting material. In the semiconductor it can flow around and it will eventually end up on the working electrode. The working electrode which I'm gonna draw like this. So working electrode the working electrode is usually just a piece of glass. But the glass is layered with a thin transparent conductive oxide. 
Transparent Conductive Oxide. This is abbreviated TCO. And a common example of this is indium tin oxide, one of the common uh, transparent conductive oxides. What the transparent uh, conductive oxide does is it provides a route for the electrons. So the electrons can now go with less, less resistance through this layer until it reaches a contact that we make. So we can solder on like a copper wire or something where the electrons can flow easily. And then we connect this uh, wire to some kind of load. Maybe this is a light bulb or a, a pump or a battery or whatever you like it to be. And then the electrons flow to the other side of the solar cell. Obviously this is not drawn to scale. The solar cell in total will just be like a, a centimeter or something. Actually less than a centimeter. So, on the other side, we have what's called the counter electrode. Counter electrode. Which also has some kind of conducting layer. It doesn't necessarily need to be transparent because it's only on the working.